Located in the middle of nowhere on the southern edge of Siberia, hugging the Mongolian border lies the Tuva Republic. Regarded by many as the poorest region of Russia, this vast landscape is home to just over 300,000 inhabitants and has for years been plagued with unrelenting poverty and neglect by the Russian government, resulting in the vast majority of people to turn to crippling microloans, alcoholism, and crime just to try and get by. For a little bit of background, the Tuvan Republic lies at the geographical center of Asia in southern Siberia. Its capital is the city of Kaizel. From 1921 to 1944, Tuva constituted a sovereign, independent, but partially recognized nation, acknowledged only by its neighbors, the Soviet Union and Mongolia. The majority of the population are ethnic Tuvans, which are a Turkic ethnic group indigenous to Siberia who live in Russia, Mongolia, and China. They speak Tuvan, a Siberian Turkic language. While Russian is spoken natively by the Russian minority, both are official and widely understood in the Republic. Only about 16% of the population are Russians. Tuva was the last to join Russia, not counting Crimea, and that, along with ethnic Russians being the minority, we can perhaps see why the Russian government has neglected this region of its people, or to say in the least, has not made its development a pressing issue. The capital city of Tuva, Kaizil, is some 4,600 kilometers east of Moscow. There are no major megapolises, there are no major business hubs or active tourism either. Around 80% of the Republic is taken up by mountains, with the remainder of the area being predominantly steeps. The territory is four times the size of Switzerland, yet it is only inhabited by some 332,000 people. Despite its economic travails, one traveler describes his experience after a long journey to the region. In Tuva's northern and eastern parts are the Great Cyan Mountains, and once you hit the Tuvan border, everything looks surreal. The endless steep is truly more beautiful than you can imagine. However, even in this far-flung land, there are still remnants of a Soviet past scattered across Tuva. Despite its beauty and nice people, Tuva doesn't enjoy the best of reputations. Kaizil was named the most dangerous city, with the highest per capita murder rate in Russia, with Tuva also being named the poorest and with the lowest standard of living in the country. Taking a look now at one of the key problems in Tuva is the microloans. Tuva is the most indebted place in Russia. A recent study found that in Tuva, locals on average pay 78% of their income just to cover their debts. The level of indebtedness in Tuva, if it is 78%, is truly fantastic, said Valery Miranov, a professor of economics in Moscow, adding that the same study found the national average indebtedness to be an already worrying 35%. Indebtedness of 40% is already quite bad, and here they have found 78%. That means essentially, for every $133 of salary they receive, they pay $107 on their debts. Adding to this, they say, the situation in Tuva is particularly worrying because wages there are so low. Additionally, according to the Labor Ministry in August, Tuva has the country's highest poverty rate, with 34% of the population living below the official survival minimum. The national average in Russia is 12.1%. The average wage in Tuva is around $495 a month, and the official unemployment rate is nearly 12%. Essentially, People are just surviving, a local resident reported. If they want to improve their standard of living even just a little, get a new refrigerator or washing machine, they need a loan. It takes a decent sum to get children ready for the school year or to buy winter clothes. It is very hard. They aren't taking loans to buy a new Toyota or an Audi. People take loans for almost everything because they simply have no money. The resident added that people in small towns and villages are often reduced to getting loans to buy food, particularly when salaries and social payments are delayed. All these microloans lead to what some call the indebtedness treadmill. The microlending industry in the region is booming with the corresponding high interest rates. Microloans are advertised very aggressively, explained another local woman. They promise loans at 1%, but not everyone understands that they mean 1% per day. But people are just tired of not being able to buy anything, tired of living from paycheck to paycheck, tired of living from paycheck to paycheck, so they take the loans without thinking what will come next. One resident got on the indebtedness treadmill in 2008, and for years, she paid half of her $270 monthly salary to the bank. Some months, she couldn't make the payments and resorted to microloans, and when she missed payment on them, the interest rates skyrocketed and debt collectors began to hound her. They would call day and night, she recalled. We know where you live, we know your family, go and sell a kidney. I began drinking, she admitted, and adding that darker thoughts also crossed her mind. So many people in Tuva fall into debt because of the region's poor infrastructure and social services. The region has no railways, which raises the prices of all goods and makes businesses reluctant to open there. Ending off the report, a resident was asked, what can the government do to support such a region? The response was, the government can at the very least ensure that basic social services are provided at a normal level. That is, at a level that lets people use them without added difficulties. I'm talking primarily about healthcare and education. Meanwhile, however, 
The region's debt problems are mounting. The main thing is to make your payments and not ruin your credit, and then you can buy something to eat. Another resident shared her experiences saying, there are expenses in Tuva that you simply must get a loan for, such as a car. Public transportation is very bad. We don't have commuter trains, trams, or trolley buses, and even the normal buses run sporadically. To simply save up enough money and buy a car is not realistic, particularly since cars are getting more expensive. We also have big problems with kindergartens, she explained. When we were finally able to get a spot, we had to take it, and there isn't any public transport there, so I had to take a loan to buy a car. And when this resident's daughter finished school, she reported that more loans had to be taken out to send her daughter to an institute in another region, as there are no higher education institutes in the region. So for 10 years, I paid loans for a car to send my daughter to an institute, adding that she and her husband paid about 40% of the combined monthly income to meet the payment. It's also noted that this was a relatively lucky outcome given the circumstances. Well, that just goes to show how dire the straits are in Tuva. And all of these problems have been persistent for years in Tuva. However, there's another problem that has arisen, making the whole situation worse. In September, the Wall Street Journal reported, in Russia's poorest regions, war in Ukraine exacts heavy toll. Many of the dead come from Siberia and other far-flung regions with fewer opportunities. They report, in the opening months of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the head of Tuva kept a running tally on social media of local men who had been lost fighting in the conflict. Many of Russia's war dead are from places like Tuva and other less developed communities on the country's margins. In these areas, jobs are often few and far between, and the military offers security and a chance at a better life. And so this is an especially bitter pill to swallow in context of the neglect that these regions, especially Tuva, face from its government. These people are now paying the consequences because the actions of a nation that they have no say in, and most of whom are not even Russian, but Turkic. And these poor and overlooked people now being taken advantage of because they simply have nowhere else to turn. Add to that, they can't even speak out. As the Wall Street Journal points out, in March, Russia passed a law that threatens prison time for anyone speaking out about Russia's actions in Ukraine or what it views as discrediting the military. Alright, so that's going to be it guys. Please subscribe for more Squalid Suburbs and thank you for watching.